In this video, we're going to talk about money. Um, we call this financial literacy, but it really comes down to how good are you with money? That's an important question in life. I would say it's one of the most important ones. Um, you know, unfortunately, uh, we don't want to live for money, but at the same time, in order to live, we need to have some money. And so how we manage our money is extremely important. I think you all know of examples of people who have been not so good with money or they've been quite poor, and it's, it's not a good way to live. You know, there's a lot of pressure when you have financial stress because you're not sure how you're going to get how you're going to even pay the bills for this month, for example. A lot of people live from paycheck to paycheck. That's a very uncomfortable way to live. So one of the questions I ask my students before they take this quiz is, how are we Americans with our money? And of course, people come back with some pretty bad negativity. We are terrible with money in the United States. I mean, just look at our debt, our national debt is 20 some trillion dollars. People have no idea how big that number is. It's scary big. But anyway, all to say, let me give you some statistics to tell you a little bit about uh, how we are doing with our money in America. The average school loan for people that borrow money for school is about $29,000. The average car loan is about $30,000. And people on average are paying a monthly payment of about $500 per month. Uh, for credit card debt, the average family has about $6,849 in credit card debt and pays about $1,000 of interest every year. Now, I don't know about you, but I could think of some good things to do with $1,000 and we're just thrown away on interest for our credit cards. That's the cost we pay to borrow that money. And, you know, people are literally having less children or they're waiting longer to have children because of their financial situation. Just a couple more. Um, about 20% of those who are close to retirement literally have no money saved at all. And quite a few are in a position where I, I would say uh, at least another 20 or 30% would say that they're in a position where they're going to um, certainly be pretty short and they're concerned about how they're going to make it. Um, one half of Americans claim they would have to borrow money or sell something to cover a $400 emergency. I don't know about you, but that one's hard for me to believe. That's not a good thing. Um, according to Gallup poll, to a Gallup poll, about one third of Americans maintain a household budget. I've also seen numbers around 40%. So either way, it's a lot less than half, half the people in the United States that are basically maintaining a budget. And then finally, I think this one speaks pretty loud, 55% say they feel lost when it comes to a long-term and stable financial plan. All right, so what I wanna do is we're gonna go through this literacy quiz and I'll, an I'll answer each of these and I'll try to go into just a little bit of detail. And then throughout this section, I'll try to add some more information wherever I can. But um, my goal, I mean, this is like my favorite lesson to teach, or I should say this is my favorite chapter to teach because I think it can make a huge difference in my students' lives. I don't think anybody ever plans to to go bankrupt someday or to be broke and without anything when when they're older. Nobody plans to be poor. Nobody plans to be broke or anyway, all to say, you know, it's it's decisions that you make early in life and throughout your life that are going to determine, you know, what kind of life you're going to have financially. Now, for me, it's not like it's all about money. But at the same time, I need money to survive, to pay for things, to have a home, to have a car. And so let's go ahead and um, go through these questions and talk a little bit about this. And honestly, I hope someday, 20 years from now, you'll go, man, I'm so glad Mr. Smith told me about this and convinced me I should do it. 
and it's really making a difference in my life. I would love to hear back from somebody. I don't, hopefully I'll be around still then, but um, you know, I'm hoping to make a difference. This is important stuff. Number one, true or false, budgeting is not really necessary for a college student. False, of course that's false. Okay, well why? I know what some of you are thinking. I'm a poor, struggling college student. What the heck is Mr. Smith thinking? I don't have money, so how can I even budget? Well, the bottom line is we're all spending money somehow. I don't know how much you're making. I don't know how much you're spending. But budgeting is important because when you budget, you see where your money's going. And you're a lot less likely to make bad choices. Well, at the very least, you know what you're doing. Um, when you're not budgeting, you know, you can spend a lot of money and not realize the kind of money you're spending. I mean, even on our habits and going out, you know, eating out. I mean, we all have our, you know, getting a, a regular coffee at Starbucks. These kinds of things add up. When you budget your money, you see where it's a going, where it's going, and you adjust, and you make choices, and you make, you know, based on what you're seeing. And the bottom line is, you could end up saving a lot of money, and you could also end up avoiding going into a great deal of debt. All right, and the sooner you start budgeting, the better off you'll be. Let's go ahead and move on to number two. You should start saving once you settle down and start a family. Eh, that's false. Are you really going to just suddenly have that uh, habit of saving when you settle down and start a family? Don't you want to start that before then? In fact, I would argue that that should happen when you're growing up. Hopefully, and I've had some students that have told me this is true for them, hopefully your family has helped you to learn how to save money and encouraged you or even kind of pushed you to save money. Um, I know my wife, we have three sons, and whenever they would make, when they were young, they'd make like 10 bucks and she'd say, all right, give me a dollar. And they would whine and complain a little bit, but she'd take that money little by little and put it in the bank and you know the bottom line is when they graduated they had a few thousand dollars in the bank and they're like wow you know and anyway all to say um, it's a habit you want to develop when you're young the younger the better now for a college student how do you save if you're like penniless and just trying to survive well I would argue that or I would say that there may be some of you or some that maybe shouldn't save. But if, if, you, if you feel like you can do this, these are two easy ways to start getting the habit of saving. It's the habit that matters, and that's what you're trying to develop. So number one, whenever you get change, you know you have change at the end of the day, you could just throw that change into a bucket or something or a bottle of some sort, and then every once in a while when it's filled up, you can take it to the bank and put that money in the bank. Another way is every time you get paid from your job, you could always save a buck. I mean, it doesn't have to be a lot. The bottom line is in the beginning, it's probably going to be small. But here's the thing that happens. When you start saving money and you start seeing it grow, that is a motivation to save more. And so maybe now you're going to save two bucks every time you get paid. Or when you get your first real job, you're not just ready to spend all your money. You're like, you know what? Um, they offer a 401k here or some other kind of retirement. I'm going to start, maybe not put a lot in, but I'm going to put something in. Especially if you work somewhere where they match what you save. Let's say you save 4% and they match that. that that's like double your money and it's free. So building that habit of saving is an important habit. And the sooner you start it, the better off you'll be. Number three, what is your credit score? In fact, what is a good credit score? So number one, you should know what your credit score is. If you've never borrowed anything uh, using, you know, like a credit card or at the store or usually it's credit card where we're, we're getting things. Um, or, or maybe you bought a used car or and you paid payments, 
Um, if you've done that, then you have a credit score. If you've always paid cash, you never had a credit card, then you probably don't have a credit score. So what's a good credit score? Well, somewhere between 600 and 750. Now, generally speaking, if you're 700 or above, they call that the 700 club, you're gonna get pretty good interest rates whenever you borrow money. Or like if you get a credit card, you're gonna get a lower interest rate. Um, if you're closer to the 600 range, you're still considered worthy of getting that credit card, but you're maybe not gonna get quite as good of an interest rate. And there's other places where your credit score can affect you know, what kind of loan you can get and what kind of terms, you know, what kind of interest rates you're gonna get. Uh, let's see. Um, I think that's all I wanna say about that. Number four, I just realized I have two number fours. Um, what is the interest rate on your credit card, assuming you have one? I find that a lot of students don't even know their interest rate for those that do have credit cards. You really ought to know what it is, especially if you're paying interest on your credit cards, if you're carrying a balance. So generally speaking, it's around 20% when a student, a college student gets their first credit card. Now in the beginning, it might be less than that. But long term, it ends up being about 20%. So that's a very high interest rate. And so you don't want to be carrying a balance if you can avoid it. Um, the second number four, <laughs> It is best if you don't use a credit card. Well, this one could go either way. Now, here's, here's the thing. So I would say, I could say this and it would be true. Credit cards are awesome and credit cards are evil. In fact, I think some of you probably think of credit cards as evil because you've seen how you or others have gotten into trouble real fast with their money with credit cards. And uh, you know, the bottom line is a credit card in the hands of somebody that's not responsible or have a, that doesn't have a lot of discipline is a bad thing. So that would be a case where credit cards are evil. And in fact, um, people in the United States, there's a lot of people that have gotten in trouble with their credit cards. And so in that case, you would say that's an evil thing. What's going on there? And the credit card companies are making a lot of money off people in doing that. On the other hand, um, I think credit cards are great. I have a Southwest credit card. And so I earn Southwest miles for, for flying. My wife and I like to fly back and forth between Arizona where our family is. And so we earn some points by paying for things on our credit card. And at the end of the month, if I, as long as I pay off my balance and we're down to zero at that point, then for a whole month, I had that money for, I spent all that money and I never had to pay anything until the end of the month. And at the same time, I'm earn, earning those reward miles on my airline flights. So, and there's all sorts of other ways that credit cards can benefit you and so the bottom line is, you know, why are these credit cards, be, why are so many companies issuing these credit cards and trying to get you to get one? They're banking on, at some point, you carrying a balance and getting in trouble with your credit cards. That's why they're willing to give you those great, you know, giving, give you that credit card, which, you know, is really great if you're paying your balance off every month. They're literally hoping at some point you're going to, have to pay a balance and and along with that you're going to be paying interest all right number five you can improve your credit score by always paying in cash and not using credit cards and that's false in fact if you're just paying in cash and you're never using any kind of credit you can't develop any kind of credit score because that's how you get a credit score so what i recommend for most people for their first credit card is, first of all, you save some money. Let's say you have $1,000 and you put it in the bank and then you, you talk to the people at the bank and you say, hey, I, need to, I would like to get my first credit card and I'll use that $1,000 to back up my credit card so you'll know that I'll pay it. 
and I want that and I'd like to get a thousand dollars for my credit card you know that's what you can put on the credit card up to thousand dollars and it's not a bad idea to have a parent or somebody that's good with money to hold you accountable and to and to help you you know to make sure that you're uh, using that credit card wisely if you start getting out of control then it's time to shut down the account but the bottom line is it's safe because you have that money we call it collateral that backs the credit card another way that a lot of people will develop credit is they get a gas card and again you're just paying it off each month you're already paying for gas by paying for it on a credit card you're building some credit all right let's go ahead and move on to the next slide true or false to improve your credit score you need to have a credit card and pay interest on purchases e that is false in fact I've literally had students who said somebody at a bank told them if they carry a balance and they pay interest on that that they're earning more credit that is a lie <laughs> do not believe that you earn credit by borrowing it money borrowing money and paying it back on time making your payments paying the whole thing off each month whatever it is you do not need to carry a balance it does not help you at all as you're trying to build credit number seven when should you start saving for retirement people advisors recommend in your 20s why is that well if I put money away I'm in my 50s maybe I have 20 years to let that money grow I mean it's gonna grow but that's not going to grow nearly as as much as your money that you put away when you're in your 20s the thing about um, a, when you save money over a long long period of time is once you get into 20 30 40 years that the value of that money just takes off it's what we call exponential growth now it's also dependent on the interest rate you're getting which is pretty low these days that's why a lot of people put their money into the stock market but you're looking to get some kind of decent interest rate over a long period of time and your money will grow a lot the sooner you're putting that money away the sooner you're uh, gonna well the better off you're gonna be in saving money for retirement number eight how many months income should you have in an emergency savings account particularly if you have a family well they say about three to six months here's why why do you think most people or certainly a lot of people get in trouble with their credit cards I've talked to a lot of students and most students are like you know what I'm gonna pay it off at the end of every month some are petrified of even getting a credit card but they're determined they're gonna pay it off every month well I think that's true for a lot of people and what happens is at some point there's an emergency and you don't have the money to cover it what if you need to spend a thousand dollars on your car I mean that's very possible and you can't buy a new car so you're gonna pay the thousand dollars but you don't have it you put it on your credit card a few more emergencies happen and the next thing you know that credit cards gotten away from you and it's out of control why did that happen because you don't have an emergency account so if you have an emergency account let's say you've been putting that money away saving like mr smith said and you've got two or three thousand dollars now maybe you have plans for that two or three thousand dollars but if you had a choice between using that money and putting it on a credit card it's a lot wiser to use that money and avoid paying i mean that high interest rate on your credit card so if people have an emergency saving or emergency savings account it can avoid having to use that credit card to pay for those kinds of expenses the other thing is what if you lose your job it might take you three to six months to make uh, to find a job that can replace that income that you lost all right let's move on to number nine what's the most important principle for one's personal finances there's a there's a video it's actually broken in two parts that's made by a unit or a professor at the um, University of Oklahoma 
and it's a great video on financial literacy. And I always, I'm going to put it up. I would really encourage you to look at it if you, you know, maybe not during this class if you're too busy to, to do it. But at some point, I think it'll really think about your finances and uh, what you can do better as you look towards the future. He, he goes some, through some really good things. But the most important thing he points out is really quite simple. If you want to be successful with your money, spend less than you earn. It sounds so easy, but over the years, this could be one of the hardest things to, to manage your money in such a way that you're spending less than you earn. As long as you're doing that, you're going to be successful. Uh, number 10, on a scale from 1 to 10, how do you rate your financial literacy? If it's 1 or towards 1, that would be very bad. Towards 10, that would be very good. All right, anyway. Um, in this chapter, I hope to be able to share a few more things with you. And ultimately, I hope that you, in your lifetime, you will be good with your money. You won't end up broke someday and stressed out by living paycheck to paycheck. I mean, there are times in our lives where it seems like we go through those periods that are challenging. But the better you are with your money, you can certainly make those types of uh, things less likely to happen. You know, and keep in mind, I mean, you can do everything right. There's no guarantees in life. And a medical emergency or, you know, things can happen and it can be devastating for your finances. But generally, if you're wise with your money, it's going to make things a lot better for you in the long run and for your family. All right, that's the end of this discussion.